everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the YouTube series where I reveal what's inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Welcome to part four of molds I found on Gumtree. So this one's called a Jody mold and it's got 1968 written on the side and when I'm opening it up it's got some really sweet tiles and like a wood textured effect on the bottom half which makes me think it's going to be a birdhouse because of where the hole is positioned in the mold so when i opened this one up it actually had a spider home in it which was totally gross i had to make sure that i sponged this one down really well um, just because it did have a lot of dirt and debris and i got rid of that spider web it was a bit gross this is why i do have to clean all of them before i pour them because i wouldn't really want a spider web in my work so yeah this one was really really dusty and it was a big job to clean it and make sure that it was nice and clean sometimes it's just a matter of pouring the mold uh, first just to clean out all the stuff with the first mold and then pouring another one that you care more about I guess so once that was sort of clean as I could get it I grabbed my rubber band and I popped it over the top Initially, I only put one on there, but because it's such an obscure shape and the rubber band doesn't quite hold it that great, I got some smaller rubber bands and put them over there um, once this was all sort of ready to go for pouring. So I mix the sloppy clay up, pour it into my jug so that it creates an easy pouring rhythm, and then I pour the mold up to the top. So there you can see the two extra rubber bands I put on top just to make sure that it was extra secure. This mold actually needed quite a lot of clay. Um, I didn't expect it to need so much. It makes sense that it needed so much, but I wasn't quite prepared that it used nearly a full jug of my, um, like my little blue jug of clay. So yeah, I was lucky that I did have it quite full and that I didn't end up having to do two pours because when you do two pours, you can get ring marks through the mold. So I knew this one was ready to pour out because the side started to solidify and then I poured it out and it actually made the best noise. I'm going to show you the noise because it's the funniest noise I've heard so far with the molds. So here it is. I allowed it to set for a couple of hours and then I pulled the rubber bands off and separated the two pieces. I knew it was ready when the clay started to come away from the mold itself. So that's generally a really good indicator for plaster molds is when that clay is moving away from the plaster, that's when you can separate them. So I start by pulling the top half off and it was actually quite a bit of a challenge. It was really stuck on there. Even though I knew it was dry enough, I had to do like a lot of wriggling and maneuvering. And then it finally came off and I was really stoked about it. But the bottom half was still sort of stuck in there. And I had a feeling it had to do with that pouring circle. So what I did was I went in there and sort of pulled some of that clay out and went in with a little knife and gently cut away at the clay, not to mark the plaster in the process. So once I had that sort of pulled out, I did a bit more maneuvering and pulling and prodding and poking and it still wouldn't come out. I'm not really sure why um, because it was set enough to come out of the plaster. I think that maybe it's got some sort of um, like a little hook in there that's stopping it from coming out until it's a certain point of dryness. Um, but yeah, so I'm cutting more of that clay away, just doing anything I can to try and get it out because I want to make sure that it's still damp enough that I can have a play with it if I need to reshape anything, but also set enough that I'm not going to damage it when I pull it out. So it was probably the hardest mold I've ever had to try and get out for this reason. So once it's all cut out, I gave it a bang um, upside down to try and get gravity to pull it out. And then I gave it a bit more of a wriggle and a move. <laughs> it was honestly an ordeal just to get it out. It took me a while. So I'm just pushing my thumb to try and push that hole out a bit more because maybe that's preventing it from pulling out. And then suddenly it just went pop. 
like literally just slid out. You can see my shock as I'm holding it because I couldn't believe it just slid out like that. I'm not sure what was holding it in there, but um, it's out and I really like it. I think it's really sweet. It's got some really cute tiles. Um, I sort of damaged that hole by the pressure of trying to get it out constantly and did a little stress fracture, but I fixed that all up and I trimmed that hole um, and fixed all that damage I sort of caused with my thumb trying to get it out. If I had waited any longer to try and pull it out, I feel like I wouldn't have been able to fix these issues. Um, but then maybe, again, I might not have caused the issues in the first place if I just waited a bit longer for it to dry. It's always super hard to tell and I'm glad I did what I did. It just Next time I might be a little bit more cautious and wait a little bit longer just to see how that bottom dries. So with this design, there is a lot of texture, a lot of things happening um, and not much space to really, I guess, decorate with some really rad illustrations. So for this one, I decided that I'm just going to take a bit more of a simple route and um, just paint some really lovely colored blue tiles and do them all a mix and make them um, sort of mix in so that they almost look like fish scales on the roof. Um, and I'm getting like really big rainbow fish vibes so I might do that next time. The only reason I didn't do rainbow fish is because I feel like I might have a fish mold in the pile and I don't want to use that idea up until I've sort of found a fish. So um, I did some blues because I feel like it's a little bit different to what my usual work is. I use a lot of um, pinks and oranges. So once I had painted those tiles, I popped it in for a bisque fire and came back in with some glaze. So I'm doing a really soft brown glaze, which should give it a really beautiful Tasmanian oak color. So I really wanted to accentuate the wood grain of the birdhouse and pull those really beautiful textures out with glazes complementing them. So it went through the kiln and I use a cloth because it's still really hot in the kiln and I absolutely love it. It is a lot more simpler than a lot of the work I typically do but I really love how the blue and the wood grain color complement one another and make it this really soft beachy kind of feeling birdhouse. The glaze came out amazing. Look at the texture on that wood and the tiles look so dreamy all together. It's like a little mermaid house. I'm so impressed. I really want to make more of these. The only issue sure I do find is that there's no way to hang it which is probably something I'll look into next time um, so that you can actually prop it in your tree. What do you think of this one? I really like it. Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.